Okay. You're not big. All right. So, hi everyone, Colin Allworth from Sencha. Uh, this is not really a Sencha project. This is a. Uh, I had some free time, and by free time I mean weekends after Gwit Create, when I was no longer putting a talk together and thought I'd like to actually write some code. Uh, we had a release we wanted to get out. I wanted to spend some time actually building an application with it to see what kinds of stuff was broken. We had a new version of Gwit. I wanted to play with some stuff, see how much awesomer and better it was. And uh, it's been quite a while since I'd written an application. I've been in Essentia for over three years now. I haven't written a lot of large applications in that time. For the most part, I've been helping other people and trying to give advice, and I wanted to make sure I'm still updated and current on a lot of this stuff. But writing a lot of large business applications is not what a lot of people do for their f uh, fun, free time. So trying to figure out how do, I, how do I put some together, or how do I learn something along the way, and came up with this basic idea for a project. So without actually explaining what the topic is just yet. Fiddleford Wix, what is it, why did I do it, how, and what's next is basically the, the short version of this. So for anyone here who's done any CSS or JavaScript work outside of Wix, you've probably done a little bit of stuff with a fiddle before. Who's done any JavaScript at all, ever? I think people are lying to me. Okay. Um, <laughs> and anyone used fiddle? Does anyone know what a fiddle is? So we've got a bunch of different options out there besides Fiddle, which is sort of the most known name out there. There's CodePen, there's JSBin, there's CSS Desk, there's a thing called Plunker. Uh, true to internet form, they remove all the vowels and just make it Plunker. Um, the, oh, that's quite a lag. There we go. The, uh, the JS Fiddle itself looks like this. We've got some HTML, some uh, CSS over here some JavaScript you can write, and then you get basically a running application. You've got some options for how to share this thing. Uh, whenever you make a change, though, you have to give it a little bit of a kick to say, please run all this HTML, CSS in this other iframe over here. Every time you make a change, you have to do something to make it actually take effect. Uh, and what it will do is it'll wrap your HTML, CSS up together, join it all into one application. It, it does some extra work for you that you don't necessarily see uh, to run it in the iframe. This is a different version. This is Plunker. There we go. Uh, with just an HTML page. But we've got separate files over here. We've got all the various files we want. This is from a simple Angular app where someone was trying to figure out what scopes actually mean, what happens when this goes away. I was trying to figure out, so how exactly did they cover this gar garbage collection thing? Um, it sort of a mystery to me still. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. But um, th there are differences here. We've got the ability still to freeze and make, uh, or just say this is exactly how it should be. Uh, fork it, say make my own copy. Uh, stop is, you know, if you change this, stop uh, playing it here, run something else. Depends on exactly how you're treating the application, what exactly you're trying to achieve out of it. So we want to do all this, but with GWT instead of JavaScript. So, OK, on the surface, sounds pretty reasonable except for anyone who's ever compiled a application ever. There's probably no way to teach Firefox or Chrome to go through and do all these details. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't feel like waiting 538 seconds <laughs> to get my application to come up and see it going. Now, this is an extreme example, of course, because it's a large application with a ton of permutations. But still, it needs to be considered. How do we work on all these details? So the basic setup that I have, I needed to work out you know, how, do we, how do we solve this variety of problem. We've got a web server that says, you know, let's actually spit up content. Let's let the user interact. This is the fun wit part. This is how do we actually make um, the application? How do we find out what it takes to build the UI, properly secure it so we can talk to the database, store data in some way, shape, or form, the files that the user has created, who the user is, how do we search things, junk like that, and then have various compiler agents that will read from the database and say, download the files, compile them with wit, take the output, upload them back again, and let the web server continue to serve them back up again. And all these various pieces have to get along, have to speak the same language. If we've got 10 different compilers running, we don't want two of them compiling at once, things like that. Uh, compiling, especially if there's 10 different agents running, could conceivably get a little bit expensive. If something crashes, if something gets stuck, we need to work out how to manage that kind of stuff. So web server, like I said, is how to search, edit, view content. The database is where we're storing the metadata, the users, uh, the different details you've added about each uh, part of the application, um, the source code then, and then the output, the generated output. And the compilers are the heavy lifting. How do we actually spin up WIT, point out some source, ask it to generate some output, and then return it to the client. 
So what kind of things do we use it for? What is our idea about how we can apply this? How do we make GWT better, basically? How can this help make GWT uh, as a community, uh, as a learning experience, turn out better? And this is my initial first set of thoughts here. I'm really looking forward to your input on how else we can do this and how we can change this. Um, but my, my first thoughts are, how do we um, make it easier to get started with GWT? How can you look at a simple page with a dozen lines of code and run it, and then change something, and then run it again? Uh, anyone here ever had to take more than, say, 15 minutes to get Eclipse or IntelliJ running with GWT your first time using this? <laughs> anyone ever spent over an hour teaching someone else to get their IDE running? Two hours? Three hours? It's, it can be pretty bad. And that teaches a lot of people not that the IDE is hard to use, and that the IDE is complicated, but that we're doing something fundamentally wrong. We know here we've got a great idea, but it's hard to teach other people what a great idea we've got when we get bogged down in the details. So the first and foremost goal here is to strip off those details, solve them for the user, and let them just get started and work right away. Next big piece is how do we take not small examples, but large examples. We've got a great showcase full of ways to say, here's how you can use WIT. Here are the default features. Um, here's how you can see how flexibly they can work together. If we can put them in this kind of application, someone can take a copy, duplicate it, change a few details, see what happens. And then either that becomes the new de facto copy. We don't need to wait for someone to make a change, for the change to get through Garrett, for the build to be made, and for the release to be cut. If this is the best way of demonstrating how cell table works, we want to get that out there right away. We don't want to wait around. You could also split up the showcase. I think that would probably make sense. And effectively, that's what ends up happening. Each one becomes its own entry point. Now, mm -hmm. of course, there's obvious downsides that it's instead of you know a total of a megabyte for everything. That, yeah, that's what I mean. Is is first split it up. Uh, I think you dropped off yeah. the hangout. I did. Let's see if I can rejoin. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's, yeah, that's what I meant. First split it up so it's not a big application, and then you can import in particular. Uh, you know, like each tab could be a separate application. How does it work with the recording?